Good afternoon. Isn't the time to go to sleep and relax, stretch before the cup of coffee comes? I initially would like to congratulate the NN team for putting up this marvelous job of innovating the presentations on dice. I'll let it go there. All creatures, you know, they need to survive, they need to propagate so that the species remain. That The species have to perform, they have a function, they have a form. Which comes first? The form comes first or the species come first? Which comes first, the chicken or the egg? That's a question which has never been answered. Every form has a purpose in its creation, and but how was the form created? We let go back to evolutionism, where universal law of evolution was propagated by none other than Charles Darwin. Darwin is a person when he was 23 years old, he went around the southern hemisphere, start from, starting from the United Kingdom, and went all around into the Pacific Ocean, came to the Australia, and come, came to the Africa, and then went back there. Took about five years of analysis, five years of traveling all around the world, and uh, he saw the diversity of life all over. Specifically in, in the Galapagos Islands, in the South Pacific Ocean, he saw the bunch of islands there, bunch of them. They all have different environment, some were highly, some were in plains, some were vegetated thickly, some were like almost desert. He saw the, he saw the tortoises there. Each island had a tortoise of different shape, different color, different height, different texture. He analyzed why is that. He looked at the fossils, biological variations, and he came up with a theory that all the creatures that we see today originated from that point, bacteria. It's in the ocean. This is about 4,000 million years ago. From there, the bacteria mutated and grew up to the bacteria that we see now. Some of them got mutated and went to the, became plants. Some of them became fungi, some of them became fish, and ultimately we landed with the human beings. History of human beings is very small. And that's the vastness of life we have all, over, all around us in the earth. But unfortunately, we feel being there, we control the entire system. You can watch the mass extinction that happened almost every 400, 500 million years ago. But that the one which you should remember and go back and study is Cambrian explosion which saw a metamorphosis of animals and plants from one generation to another generation. This was just about 200 years ago, he, the, uh, he proposed the origin of species. And he said all the species came from one cell. Look at this. Lamarck had told us that the person can acquire certain features, like a, like, like a camel can stretch its neck to reach the leaf at the top and thrive. So the camels, the, uh, the uh, which, uh, uh, giraffes which can stretch their neck, they acquired the long neck, they survived, and he, Lamarck, proposed that the long neck that's acquired in a lifetime can be propagated to the children, to the kids, while Darwin said, no, even if somebody acquires a long neck during lifetime, like somebody acquires the strong biceps during lifetime, he cannot pass it on to the child. It has to be a mutation. He proposed a theory of natural selection. The people who have long necks, like a giraffe, can thrive. They have better competition in the world, which is very competitive. They're, they, because they're better, their children are going to be better, they, and uh, that will be the survival of the fittest. 
they will be fighting for food they'll be fighting for space they'll be fighting for the living space water they'll be fighting for mates and they'll have better offsprings that's what the darwin said is that true we really do not know darwin said mutations are random they don't have a purpose there is nothing like uh, the animal needs a long neck so you mutate towards long neck so all kinds of mutations happen and then you end up with end up with a species which is better fitted for the environment so it's a mutations that randomly change the structures the change goes through the natural trial the fittest will survive and the faulty are eliminated that's this concept and useful mutations are propagated and more offsprings are produced than needed he proposed th three theories one is evolution one evolution two but evolution three is darwinian evolution and is it true there are a lot of people who say it may not be true purposes are unguided and uh, the can only produce defects it cannot produce a new species that's the people who who propose against darwin will will uh, are saying kevin can evolution and mutation explain everything i don't think because experience can decide the uh, there's something called epigenetics experience can decide which genes are switched off and which genes are switched on and these switched on and switched off genes are transmitted down to the offspring and the learning itself can be transmitted by that way can lamarck and darwin explain everything again they cannot because there are so many variations in life like for example there are so many variations in the gene itself which can which can uh, you know the, the the collateral channels for example if there is a collateral channel in the retina which gets opened up when there is a block how did mutation decide to have a collagen channels if you have seen the blood vessels in the congenital vein during surgery one blood vessel is closed other invisible blood vessels open up how did it happen can mutation explain that no all the cells have common organelles you see the plant cell and you see the animal cell they are all similar retinal cells convert light into the electricity heart muscles can expand and contract so the same cell performs different functions depending upon the need of the function in that locality where it's located how did i develop into a complex organ if you go into the amount of vegetation we have most of the animals most of the living beings do not have eyes like plants don't have eyes microbes do not have eyes but they still thrive the eye is a recent origin it came probably as a small pigment spot on the body and it, there are few cells and pigmented cells which are connected to the nerve and that's a primitive eye and that eye is still existing there are animals which have this kind of eye and later to accommodate for larger number of photoreceptors it got invaginated it is a cup like eye then this cup like i can only see the light can only see the movement it cannot perceive an object so you have a small in a nautilus uh, animal a small pupil came up and that focus the light little more better onto the nerve cells and then you have a lens primitive cells the first time it came into the uh, picture and that focus the light little more on the retina and now octopus had a eye which is very similar to us with all the functions so the evolution of eye itself is need based there was a need to see there is need to see the light there is need to define itself in life so it's an it it it, it formed the that is a pigment patch the flat uh, the uh, flat worms even today will have a very primitive kind of eyes like a mollusk will have eyes which has no lens but just an aperture function so is the mother it's not the structure function is the mother structure is built to fulfill the need of the, uh, the need of the uh, the particular part you're looking at engineering is absolutely perfect and uh, engineering is again based upon what actually you're looking for and always be yeah always like for example if you are taking a lid function if you are taking a tear function if you are taking a tin knot everything you see in anatomy during surgery you see it but then you cannot 
correlate its anatomy unless you analyze the function. So always analyze the anatomy with background of evolution, background of physiology, how it's functioning, and biochemistry and the disease process. Stroma. Stroma has uh, functions which are very similar to a very clean glass. How did it happen in a living being? So the, the evolution says that you will have to understand the wavelength of light and you have particles inside the stroma which are smaller than evolution, smaller than the wavelength. So visible light is minimally absorbed. In the cornea, scattering is negligible and image quality is very high. Same thing applies to corneal endothelium. It's a very complex organ, uh, organ and endothelium has to function in such a way that it keeps the detergents of the cornea around 78%. Why did it happen? Because there is a function. Again, the lens capsule, as you have seen, is very thin in the front and back, and it is in a relaxed state, it is an oblate lens. In a contracted state, it is a uh, prolate lens, in a accommodative state. So at three adapters of accommodation, it has equal power, so that's zero ASA. All this, how did it happen? Because there was a need. So form follows function. You look at the retina. If I have to manufacture a retina, I'll keep the rods and cones closest to the pupil. So it receives it first. Why did it go to the back? Because it has to get the blood supply from the underlying substances. So, so it was made in such a way that the rods and cones are well supplied with the blood and the rest of the connections are in the front of it. So there is a need to supply rods and cones with a lot of nourishment. So it went to the back. It's behind the logic. So form follows the need. When in doubt, why it, this topic came to me is when you have a doubt, why is it so, you always ask the question, why is it meant? What function to achieve, it is there, and the truth will come back, and you will understand the function and the structure much better. And if you are innovator, if you want to innovate something, for example, I just give a crude thing, if you want to innovate a camera, we all have box-type cameras but the eye has got a camera which has been perfected over generations, over generations, over millions of years, it's globe-like. So why don't you create a camera that's globe-like? I'll take just one minute, I'm closing it. And uh, aeroplane is built on principle of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the birds. JCV has got hands-like thing, and somebody must have worked on it to create exactly like a hand, joints, vasculature, brain and computer, all can be designed in such a way that it mimics the nature. Left here. Natural selection in today's scenario, just keep thinking of an able person. If a disabled person is very rich, he can always correct it. So he'll propagate. And a person who is fittest may not pro procreate and he may end up his genes at that point. So the fittest natural selection, fittest is the person who is going to survey may not apply in today's scenario. Evolution, at the end, Charles Darwin said, who survives in the race? Many of us think that it is the strongest person of the species who survives, he may not survive. Some people think the most intelligent person who survives may not. The person who survives in today's world is the person who can adopt himself for a change, a person who lives within the means that are available around him. Without fighting, is a person who is going to survive, and a person who works cooperatively against common threats mm. is a person who is going to survive. Thank you.